Hello powerful people. Welcome and thank you for visiting my channel where I share everything you need to know to design your life. Today we're going to talk about redesign and how you know when it's time to redesign your space. All of us have encountered redesign in some aspect whether we realize it or not. Redesign can take on a very sophisticated or a very rudimentary form. How do we know it's time to redesign our space instead of something more invasive such as remodel or renovation? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today as well as some suggested solutions. There will always be links below a video for any items that I share including my filming equipment in case you are curious or perhaps considering some of the items for yourself. For clarification, redesign is when you alter an existing thing in a way that it affects the function, appearance, or content. It is the action or process to design something again in a different way. Take for example when an elegant wedding dress skirt is redesigned into a beautiful bassinet cover or when you take a t-shirt and redesign or repurpose it as cleaning rags or even the 1973 brick over many years and many redesigns brings us to what we now know for the modern Android and iPhone. But what does redesign mean? Mean in our home environment and what does it mean to us personally? This is not as easy to define because it can involve vastly different processes person to person and produce a wide spectrum of results. Redesign can involve moving furniture within one room or throughout your entire home. It can be taking away pieces that no longer serve you or adding pieces that serve you better. It can be simply adding new cushions and drapes or changing the entire space. It can be even taking on an entirely new philosophy for the way you live your life. Think of going from French country to modern design or from maximalist to minimalist. These all involve redesign. For this process, the two tools that is best to embody is mindset and patience. We live in an era where we are convinced that we need things in an instant. We're told that we have no attention span and what we do have is dwindling daily. I personally do not believe this because I can spend way too much time on the finite details of a design, making plans for my business, or dreaming of life. I suspect others do this as well. We're told everything must be faster and faster and design is no different. If something is a priority, suddenly we find the mindset and patience to dig in our heels, focus, and get it done. The process of redesigning your home is no different. I know what you're saying. Some of you are saying, well, I have no patience. I, I can't find the mindset. I can't focus. But let me remind you, those who claim not to have the ability for mindset and patience have come through the same recent times as those who claim to have an abundance. So it is possible to optimize the results of your redesign, prepare your mindset, and embrace patience. It will make the process so much more enjoyable. You will discover what redesign looks like for you as you think, plan, and execute the process of redesign. So when do we know it's time to redesign? When do we know it's time to commit to the in-depth process and hard work it will take to make the changes? Changes that will transform how we interact within our spaces and improve how our spaces serve us better. So won't you join me? That is our focus today, and that includes you. Even if you are only planning to change out your drapes and decorative cushions, I encourage you to stay with us until the end because I have a feeling you will find the uncontrollable inspiration to redesign your entire home. I will be sharing with you eight signs it is time to redesign. Sign number one, your space is looking a bit dated. This could be your sofa, art, cushions, decor. Maybe they're faded, stained, or worn. Maybe your space is categorized as 19-something-ish. The space can be given a refresh by adding new drapes, curtains, throws, and slip covers to your furnishings. This is one affordable way to give it a refresh. This is the most common reason for redesign, but it's certainly not the only one, as we will discover as we go through the next seven signs. Sign number two, your space no longer inspires you. You're no longer putting any focus on the space to add flowers, scents, decor pieces. Also, you can no longer define your style. You find that you ignore the space and completely avoid it in some cases. 
set aside some time, even if it's only 15 minutes, and reimagine the space. Really think about how you use the space and what are your barriers for not giving it a redesign. Is it being overwhelmed with the entire process or thought of redesigning the space? Is it budget? Is it health? Is it that you don't have someone to help you with the heavy lifting? Is it because you don't think you have the ideas or the skills to do it? Once you have identified the issues that you are dealing with, now you have something you can work with. You can create a plan to work through these issues over time so that you have a successful redesign. Sign number three, you do things in all the wrong places. You do your work at the table, not because you enjoy it, but because your desk space, your office space is not working for you anymore or you don't have one at all. You eat sitting on the couch because your table is piled full and inconvenient. You put your makeup on in the car or standing in front of a window because you cannot trust the results you get using your vanity, which is dark and always cluttered. A sign loud and clear, big red flags that a space is wrong, a big sign that something is not working as it is intended to, is when you're constantly having to adapt how you do something in order to function within an existing space. When you do not use spaces the way they were intended to be used, they were designed entirely wrong for you. So monitor your habits and determine how you actually carry out tasks and where you carry them out most successfully. Then create a plan to make the changes happen. Create a dining space that allows you to share a meal. Create a desk space that allows you to comfortably pay your bills and write that novel. Redesign that vanity to serve you so that when you walk out, you walk out with confidence in knowing that you look your best. In case you are new to my channel, my name is Clarice Smith and I am an interior designer and EXP realtor and my passion is empowering you to design your life. I share design and real estate content, giving you the inside knowledge to create great spaces for the life you want to experience. Whether you are setting up a temporary home, you're selling and moving on, or you're in the forever home, the content you find here is value-packed and relevant. Sign number four, the smallest task seems like a chore. This relates to the previous one a little, but it's when you don't clean your space as often as you used to. It's when you detest the effort it takes to keep it clean, much less stylish. Why dust? It'll just get dusty again. Why mop? The kids and the pets will just bring in footprints. Why do anything? You don't like your space anyway and it won't last. This is not laziness, by the way. This is the lack of joy and pride in your space. It is not the lack of money because clean costs very little. It's just the lack of motivation. And we need motivation to get things done. I'm not talking about having a cheerleader on the sidelines every time you whip out a duster. What I am talking about is creating a space and a life that you love so much that it motivates you. When every task becomes a chore, there is room for improvement. So going beyond implementing the design tips that we talk about today, there's also a need to create home systems and put them into place. Consider where and what the issues are, what you're currently doing to address them, and how you can create new home systems that will address them better. It does take time and practice to create them, but it is possible to have big results with small changes. It's not the style of your kitchen or the color of the countertops that are creating the issues. It's the lack of home systems to deal with the debris, dirt, and clutter. It's easy over time to give up when you have a busy household where people are coming in and dropping their books, bags, and clutter all over every available surface. This is more than just not being in the mood to clean. No one wants to be a servant to everyone all the time. No one wants to be forced to have to clean up after everyone else and never have any time for themselves, no matter how noble it sounds. A new sofa won't fix this. This is a failure to take control of your space, and you're going to have to create systems and put them in place so that everyone participates and gets the job done and it doesn't all fall on you all the time. The systems will work even though it is a bit uncomfortable at times to 
ask other people to step up and take responsibility for their share of what needs to be done. One step toward taking your time back is to have a heart-to-heart -heart with other members of the household. How you accomplish this, of course, is up to you because you are the expert on your family. For myself, and I cannot speak for you, but for myself, I would do this in, in the most upbeat, positive way that I possibly could. I would create the systems based on talking to my family and what their preferences are because no one likes to be dictated to. We don't like to be forced to do things and we like to feel like we have some control in, in the decisions being made for us and around us. So I would ask my teenagers, you know, do you, would you prefer to do it in the afternoon when you get home? Or would you prefer to clean your room on the weekend, just spend the whole day getting it done? Because teenagers have different personalities. Maybe they would rather take care of it during the afternoon and spend the weekend with their friends. Or maybe they would rather just chill, study, whatever it is that they do because they're wiped out because of their day in the afternoon and they would rather spend a Saturday morning doing it. So I would ask my family members what their preferences are. And then I would ask them to commit to doing that. I'd say, okay, well then on X day, which whatever they told me that was, at this X day on this X time, then I'll, I expect these things to be done so that we're all doing our part. And then if they're not, maybe we could regroup and see what needs to be altered or what we need to do to make it work better for everyone. Now that is just my method, that is just how I would handle it. But again, you are the expert on your family, so I will leave that part to you. But if you can relate to any of our signs so far, would you leave a comment below and tell me which ones? Sign number five, you are constantly frustrated when you interact within the space. Let's say you have this certain thing you want to do whether it's to relax, do a craft, or maybe to work on a special project. And you begin to think about all the effort it's going to take to prepare, set up, and locate all the materials and get them ready to do this thing. You sigh in defeat and you move on to plan B, C, or D. This is a huge red flag. Your frustration always equals the feeling of a lack of control. It may be over where you live, the space, or the people that occupy it with you. One of several options is going to need to take place in order to regain that sense of calm. You're going to need to accept the cleanup and setup requirements in order to complete your interests status quo. You will need to edit your interests and supplies in order to execute them in your space as it is. Or you will need to redesign your space to support your current interests. It is that simple and that hard. As someone who enjoys learning new skills, I understand the difficulty and I can relate to the difficulty in editing those interests down. There is something freeing about admitting when something just is not for you. When you can admit that the joy lie in learning the skill, not necessarily in doing it, even when you have all the tools that go with that particular craft or skill, it's best to just pass those supplies on to someone who can enjoy them and free up the headspace, your physical space, and your time to focus on other things that you will actually do and find more enjoyable and rewarding. We will never recoup the money that it cost for the supplies, but we're not gaining anything by allowing them to clutter up our space. So ask yourself honestly, am I going to do this thing? Am I actually going to commit the time it takes to do this thing on a regular basis or on a basis that warrants having it take up space in my home? If the answer is yes, then set yourself a date, a regular time that you're going to visit that craft. If it is not something you're willing to make that time commitment to, pass them on, get it out of your space, free that up for something else. Sign number six, there is tension or strife whenever you engage within the space as a family. Picture this, it's family night. You've got the popcorn, you've got the movie, you've got the drinks, you've got it all set up, and you absolutely enjoy family nights in at the movies. Until, until the kids start fighting over who gets the chair and who gets stuck on the floor. Or even worse, 
why is so-and-so hogging the sofa? Because it's too small to hold everyone. The furniture you select and how it is placed in your space equals how well it functions. You need to choose furniture based on your family needs and how you actually live. Having petite furniture in a house full of robust teenagers is probably not the best choice. Choosing a love seat and a club chair is not conducive to having large gatherings in your space, as a sectional and well-proportioned chairs would be. Observe what is working and what is not, and make changes according to what you find out, what you determine works for your family. Every decision, while stylish, should be functional. Determine which Furniture and seating arrangement works best for your family and how they actually use the space. And focus on this first before you worry about color, pattern, or style. Sign number seven, you feel overwhelmed. You want change, you know you need change, you would like for it to change, but you can't think about it changing because you don't know where to start. Maybe it's not just one room. Maybe it's not two rooms. Maybe it's the entire house. Perhaps it's the entire home and the exterior. And that, at this moment in your life, feels overwhelming. Any design project can seem overwhelming when you're not prepared. So right at the beginning, be prepared that it's going to take more time, more effort, and most likely cost more than you anticipate. I say this not to discourage you, but to encourage you. If you are prepared that things won't be exactly as you've laid them out to be, that things will change, whether it's in availability or in cost, then you will be prepared for those changes and they won't frustrate you as much. Something can cost more, something over here costs less, this one's not available, but you wanted that one. Things will change. So if you're prepared for that change in advance, it will result in you having a better overall experience. Know that you will experience emotional moments. Some of these moments will be negative, so have a plan to deal with those when they come up. So if it is something where it's a negative, it causes negative emotion in you, but you can feasibly step away for a cup of coffee, go donate something, run an errand, anything to take you away from the, the environment that is causing the frustration, that is a wonderful thing. If you cannot, then you can at least excuse yourself for a moment, recenter, take a deep breath, and then come back and deal with that thing. And know that this will be balanced out with positive things. You will have positive experiences where this project or that room or this thing turned out so much better than you envisioned it and that is going to bring you joy, it's going to re-energize you, and it's going to empower you to take the next step. Preparation is key when creating a plan to redesign your home in a straightforward way that helps you to retain that sense of control. This is going to be a high level view. I do go into great depths with my clients, but that would not be possible to do that within this video. But a high level view would be that your, your DIY design plan could be as simple as setting an end goal for your redesign. Make a plan for each room, create a schedule for that room, and each of the tasks as you intend to tackle them. It is best if you include a start date and a finish date, and if someone is helping you, then pre-schedule when that person is going to be there to help you so that there's no guesswork or misunderstanding where you're prepared to go forward and they forgot or you forgot to mention it to them because it's on your list, but you just forgot to communicate that to them. So go ahead and nail those things down. That's very important. Make sure that your schedule is on your calendar step by step that it's on your calendar when it's going to happen, and go ahead and make those trips to the big box stores, to the Home Depot, work, work, whatever your big box store is, and get the supplies you need prior to the date of, that you're actually going to be doing the work. Because you don't want to eat up your work time, your, pro, your productive time, running errands. Have all of that done and everything in place 
prior to starting the project. Have a plan to dispose or store the items that you're releasing and that you're passing on so that they don't work their way back into your newly redesigned space. And I say released items rather than let go of because no one's taking them from you. This is a mindful action on your part to release these items from your space so that you can make space for other things you want. Sign number eight. Where sign number six was about how you and others react in your space, sign number eight is how your space makes you react. Sign number eight is you have a visceral reaction whenever you engage with the space. You walk in after spending time away, maybe on vacation, maybe simply at the end of the day, and your chest tightens, your face flushes, you feel the pressure build up behind your temples, and you want to scream cry. The emotional pressure has crossed the line and become physical. When this happens, it is a wake-up call. It is telling us, now is the time, something has to change. Frustration comes when we feel a complete lack of control. Extreme frustration can cause visceral reactions. Extreme frustration can cause visceral reactions, which is rooted in our nervous system and not our intellect. So this is not you thinking you're frustrated. This is a physical nervous system reaction to your environment. When a space is frustrating you to the point that it elicits a physical reaction, it is way, 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 way past the point of needing a redesign. Take a deep breath and find your happy place. Regain control without losing your determination and get to planning. Every solution begins with a plan, so determine what needs to be done and in what order. Map it all out and arrange it in achievable steps. To resolute that you are going to clean and organize and redesign your entire home in a weekend is not practical and it probably won't happen, but what you will be doing is setting yourself up for frustration to rear its ugly head repeatedly throughout the process. To reclaim and redesign your home with maximum calm, determine if you're going to do the redesign by room or by layer. If you do it by room, it's kind of obvious you would start with one room and complete that room before moving on to the next room. If you're doing it by layer, you would simply do the entire home, but you would do it one layer at a time. So it might be that first you would remove all the furnishings that you know you no longer want in your home. They're not serving you. They're not working for you. Another layer might be to remove everything that is broken and so on. There are pros and cons to each method, but that will vary person to person. A few tools you may find helpful during this process would be to have a notebook, grid paper, pens and markers, measuring devices, dividers and a calculator, all the different things that you're going to need to, to create a written plan and to be able to carry those tasks out. I want to remind you as you move through the process of redesigning your space to be kind to yourself, to take your time and be kind to yourself. Whatever the current status of your home, whether it's just outdated, or it's a little more involved in organization and clearing things out. Whatever it is, it didn't happen. It did not occur. It did not build up. It did not become its current self overnight. And you do not have to implement the solution overnight either. So take your time, make a plan, work at it diligently as you can, consistently as you can, and the results will astound you. This is not a time to berate yourself or feel shame. It is not a time to second guess or wish you had done it a different way. The one thing we all share in common is none of us have a time machine. We cannot go back in time. And we do not need to waste the next moment, the next day, the next week, the next year, or even the minute next second, worrying about what is already done. What we need to do is step up and focus on the solution 
and doing it in a way that it makes you feel good and you, where it gives you the results you need and you are you feel good about yourself. You feel good about how you approached it. You feel good about how you handled it. And you feel good that you did not cause any negative emotions for yourself or those that you share your space with. I hope that you found these eight signs and the solutions helpful and that you will come back and spend some time with me in the next video. My passion truly is to empower you to design your life. What challenges and struggles in your space trigger emotional reactions from you? And what are you doing to address those? Share them below in the comments and let's get a conversation started. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you will consider subscribing and joining our new community of powerful people. It not only helps the channel to grow, but it also allows me to reach more people and empower them to design their life. Be sure to check out the rest of the launch playlist where I have seven videos and they are packed full of valuable content to empower you to design your life. I'll see you in the next one. Job there. One more time, just in case. Or your need to point. Oh! Or you just go have coffee. Coffee is always relevant. Always relevant. I would just go have coffee.